Mobile phones have been around for quite a long time now. The first commercially available handset, the Motorola Dynatac, was released nearly a decade before I was born, in the year 1984. Hey, that's the same year that Apple introduced the Macintosh. Would you look at that? Now, by today's standards, the Dynatac, I mean, look at this thing, it looks hilarious. It's huge. But it was the beginning of an important industry that would forever change the world. As time went on, handsets got smaller and smaller, and SMS messaging took the world by storm. I was one of the first kids at my junior high school to get a cell phone. I'm 13, age grade seven, right? And it was the legendary Nokia 6820, which had this awesome fold-out QWERTY keyboard, though I admittedly mostly used T9, because who didn't use T9? It was 3265276. The BlackBerry revolution began in the business world around the same time I got my first phone, the early 2000s, and can largely be attributed the title, along with the Palm Trio, as the world's first mass-market smartphone. However, what we consider smartphones today, what we actually have in our pockets in 2018, really traces its roots back to January 2007. An iPod, a phone, <laughs> and an internet communicator. An iPod, <laughs> a phone. <laughs> are you getting it? These are not three separate devices. This is one device. And we are calling it iPhone. No matter how much you love or hate Apple, it is an undeniable fact that the first generation iPhone changed not just the smartphone market, but the course of human history. It was a black swan. Think of 2007 compared to today. The way we read about, about news, the way we communicate, the way we conduct business, it is all changed. Now, Google had been working on a competitor to BlackBerry OS before the iPhone was announced. However, reports indicate that this Android OS, you ever heard of it, drastically changed direction once Google got word of Apple's iPhone OS. And the first Android flagship, at least in the Android carnation we know today, the HTC Dream, was announced a little more than a year and a half after the first iPhone. And the rest, well, it's history. Through the years, there have been a number of crazy and weird designs and ideas, but until very recently, smartphones largely had a striking resemblance to the original iPhone. Heck, the iPhone 8 Plus released just last year dwarfs the 2007 flagship, but the design similarities between the two are striking, and that's more than 10 years later. And that's not just with Apple phones, the same holds true with a lot of Android handsets from up till a couple of years ago. But as you may have noticed, recent smartphones look drastically different from the last 10 years of phones we've had, and comparatively very futuristic, because we now live in a notch-eat-notch -notch world where phone makers are rapidly racing towards creating the first mass-market, bezel-free phone, and we are very close. Devices like the Vivo Nex and the Oppo Find X are nearly all screen, and they hide the cameras in a motorized mechanism. Now, only time will tell if this is going to be a reliable, convenient, and power-friendly solution, Personally, I doubt that the likes of Samsung and Apple will compromise on reliability and quality with something like this until they can really pretty much hide everything in display. But regardless, these phones not only know owe inspiration to the first iPhone, but also to the first bezel-less phone. No, not the iPhone X. No, not the essential phone. No, not even the 2016 Xiaomi Mi Mix. The first bezel-less phone was this. The Sharp Aquos Crystal, released nearly four years ago in October 2014 as a $150 off-contract prepaid phone. Yeah, you heard that right. Even by today's standards, the design of the Aquos Crystal is rather striking. All smartphones will try to perform optical illusions to make you think that the bezels are smaller than they really are. Samsung has historically curved their displays. Apple curves the glass on the iPhone X. However, Sharp decided to slope and square off the plastic screen at the corners. And it creates this really trippy but very cool 3D effect. And I think it hides the inset LED panel really well. Even all these years later, the bezels still look thinner than pretty much any phone on the market. Now, when this phone was released, people made fun of it for having a huge chin. But it's really not that big. It just looks massive because of the really, really thin bezels up top. In fact, it's nearly the same size as the iPhone 8's bottom chin, a phone that is not even a year old. And it packs in a heck of a lot more tech. It's where the front-facing camera, the ambient light sensor, and the LED are all integrated. 
Having the 1.3 megapixel front-facing camera at the bottom of the phone is weird, as you might expect. So the phone actually instructs you to flip it upside down to take your low-res selfies in all their glory. A little strange. To hit that $150 price point, it's obvious that Sharp had to cut several corners. The screen was an unremarkable, oversaturated 720p TFT display, and the entire phone was plastic. No metal or glass in sight. Not even the screen. That said, the plastic construction was important for the direct wave receiver, as Sharp called it. You'll notice that there isn't a traditional earpiece speaker. Instead, Sharp used this direct wave receiver to vibrate the plastic phone assembly, which created sound waves for the calls. It also meant that you could put your ear anywhere on the phone and still hear the caller on the other line. And it wasn't a loudspeaker either. It was still private. It was very neat. The specs, however, well, they weren't. It had a Snapdragon 400 SoC, which was the same chip being used inside of smartwatches in 2014, 1.5 gigs of RAM, 8 gigabytes of internal storage, pretty lousy cameras, a puny 2040 milliamp hour battery, and it also shipped running an outdated version of Android KitKat. Ugh, feels like Dante's Inferno in here. At the end of the day, the Sharp Equos Crystal is not a phone that most people will remember or even know about, but that doesn't make it any less impressive for a phone released in 2014, especially for $150. And I don't know about you, but I think that it may have been a source of inspiration for other manufacturers to begin developing their own bezel-less phones, which we now enjoy today and will continue to enjoy in the future. Speaking of enjoyment, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you didn't, well, I guess that other button seems to work okay too. Check out some of my other awesome videos I've done in the past over here and get subscribed for a new awesome video every week with frequency increasing very soon. More news on that. Thank you so much for watching and as always, stay snazzy.